Hi, Deidre here from Our Upcycled Life and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing some of the most incredible dump finds that I upcycled in 2022. I've taken discarded items from the trash and dump and turned them into incredible treasures. I got furniture makeovers, home decor hacks, you won't believe the transformation, and I achieved them all with just a little bit of creativity and resourcefulness. So sit back, relax, grab a coffee or a tea, and get ready to be inspired by the best dump find upcycles of 2022. We've got lots of work. Let's get started. One of my first fabulous dump finds was this candelabra. It's metal, it was painted red, absolutely loved it didn't have to do much to it I went to the dollar store and I found these little glass bowls and I got out my e6000 and I glued a bowl on each spot where a candle would have went I had to take this out to the garage and have my husband give me a hand drilling this onto the wooden stand that I found in the dump also uh, we had to drill through the metal so it was a little bit tricky and he has a stronger hand than me attached it to the wooden stand Filled up the little bowls with bird seed. Love watching my birds feed out of this in the winter. Another one of my favorite dump up cycles of last year was this little table. It was in horrible shape. Really needed some TLC. When I started upcycling this, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with it, so I just started painting. I had some red paint and I gave both the top and the bottom shelf a really good uh, coat and I wanted to paint all of the spindles also if you have never seen the trick on how to paint spindles fast um, I have a full tutorial I'll put the link down below in the description but get out your old socks and paint spindles in half the amount of time I gave everything two coats and then I decided I think I'm gonna decoupage some gift wrapping paper on that top of the table got up my Mod Podge mat put a liberal coat all over the top and I know a lot of you said well why did you paint it it's because I didn't actually know what I was going to do with this when I started so I've let that Mod Podge dry I actually put two coats of the Mod Podge on let it dry completely and I'm going to do the iron-on technique I picked this gift wrap paper up at the dollar store love the floral print of it I've got it laid on top of that two coats of Mod Podge and then I put a piece of parchment paper on top of that Using my iron on the highest setting, no steam, I ironed that gift wrapping paper onto the top of the table. And then I took my sander and just sanded away the edges and I decided I wanted to give it a little bit more of a distressed look over the whole top. This was a 220 grit, sanded it, love the way that it turned out and it blends in really beautifully with the red. And then I'm gonna seal that top up with some engine enamel because I want it to be nice and durable. Put the table all back together and i'm pretty happy with the end result for something that came from the dump next dump find is this cute little chair it didn't need very much it already had that chippy look that i love i just decided to maybe give it a little bit more i have some 80 grit sandpaper and i'm just kind of sanding on the areas where it was chipping a little bit and bringing up some of that paint color from underneath now the bottom of the chair had never been painted so i painted it with some of my black homemade chalk paint and then i cleaned it all down and that's all that this dump find needed i sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer and it looked beautiful in my garden i used it as a little plant stand added one of my signs to it. Pretty good for a free dump find. Another dump find was this window. One of the panes of glass was broken, but that's okay, I can work with it. Scrubbed it all down with some TSP so it's nice and clean. And then I scraped off any loose paint and then I was going to seal it up with my polyacrylic sealer. Now for this project, I'm gonna be using my mirror effect spray paint if you have not used this product before you need to give it a try it will give glass a vintage mirror look now i want to do a little bit of an extra step so i got out some of my stencils place the stencil in the middle of the glass and i used my chalk paint and i stenciled on the mandela let it completely dry and then i got out my mirror effect spray paint now this takes a mixture of water and vinegar and the mirror effect spray paint 
on the back side of the glass that we stenciled on that mandala you're going to spray on the mirror effect spray paint before it dries you're going to squirt on that water vinegar mixture and then take a paper towel and blot at it and as you're doing that it's creating a a full antique mirror look you're going to keep applying those two steps until you get the desired look that you want and it is absolutely beautiful So now you can get the mirror effect. You want to paint the back of that now with some dark color. I like using black. And then when you flip it over, you are going to see how beautiful this is with the stencil on it and the mirror effect behind it. Absolutely love this dump up cycle. So glad I found this window. found one table leg claw foot with the glass ball in it absolutely gorgeous brought it home because I had a vision and I'm gonna turn it into a bit of a hanger for one of my wooden signs I have this piece of pine scrap pine and I'm going to give it an aged chippy vintage look using my candle wax technique painting it with some black chalk paint gonna layer up a bunch of different colors and then add my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfers. Um, this is probably one of my favorite signs of the year that I've made. And I also decided to do the hairspray crackle technique on this. It can be a bit tricky, but if you can get it to work for you, it's fantastic and it gives a real authentic chippy look. So the trick with the hairspray uh, crackle technique is to use acrylic paint. You can't use latex paint spraying the hairspray in between each coat letting it dry and you can use your heat gun to dry it in between two and that will also give a little bit more of an authentic crackle putting on my white acrylic paint on top we're going to now dry it and you'll see as i'm drying this with my heat gun the crackles will appear absolutely fantastic technique for making authentic old looking signs gonna scrape away at it take a little bit of water on a stencil brush to age it even more and I know this seems like a lot of work but if you're taking the time to make really gorgeous signs it's worthwhile having a beautiful base before you start this graphics available in my Etsy store I love this organic theme uh, graphic and using my Mod Podge mat let it sit for 24 hours and then I'm taking a little bit of water rubbing off that paper and once I have this sign all done I'm going to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer and add that table leg to the top to hang the sign from with some old rusty chain. I love this. This next dump find was one of those start the car, start the car. I found this in the wood pile at the dump. I could not believe somebody had just disregarded it. It looked like it maybe had been on a porch in the sun. It was really dry and brittle, but I knew I could give it a new life. Sanded it down with some uh, sandpaper just to knock off any varnish that was left on it. Gave it a really good cleaning and then let it dry completely. Now for the wood parts on the rocking chair, it was so dry. I went to my local Home Depot and they recommended this product. It's a penetrating oil and it just soaked right up into the wood. I actually ended up putting on two coats of it and I'll probably do it again next season because it really needed the moisture. And for the caning, I was recommended some linseed oil. I put a couple really good liberal coats on it. When this was finished, oh my gosh, you guys, it is gorgeous. It is um, at our cabin. I have it up in our bedroom right now at the cabin, but it's gonna go on my porch in the summer. Unbelievable fine. Now this little lantern was in the scrap metal bin gorgeous lantern but the glass piece was missing and I didn't want to paint this I wanted to really 
keep that rust feel. So I took it outside and I gave it a really good coat with some of my engine enamel. This makes it really durable and it also is uh, great if you want to keep it outside. It will stand up in the weather really well. So I gave it two really good coats of this engine enamel and it just made the rust gorgeous looking. Love the color of it. Once it was dry, I knew it needed something to put in the middle. So I got a tin can, painted it with some white chalk paint, and then I used one of my homemade napkins to decoupage on the front of the tin can, filled it up with some greenery, and I thought it just finished off this lantern that I found in the scrap metal bin perfect. This next dump find DIY was a huge project. I found this cabinet in the wood pile. It, nothing had been done to it other than the original build of the cabinet. Uh, it was raw pine and I wanted to give it a real farmhouse feel. So first job was painting everything with some black homemade chalk paint and I want to give it a really chippy distressed finish. You know that I love that look. So I used my Vaseline and I'm gonna layer up a couple different colors. Now I know it looks like a splotchy mess right now. Hang tight because the end result is really beautiful. I'm gonna use my hairspray technique again, spraying on that hairspray, and then painting some acrylic white paint on top of it, using my heat gun to dry as I go along. Because it's such a big piece, I'm doing it in sections and then drying it and then painting another section. And you can see the crackling start and I just love that farmhouse feel that I'm getting with this technique. I'm gonna scrape all around the edges because remember way back in the beginning, I put on the Vaseline and I wanna expose that paint from underneath all those different colors. So just gonna scrape away and it's just really adding to that chippy feel. Using a little bit of water and my stencil brush, this allows you to remove paint down to the next layer or the layer even below, and it just gives that authentic worn look. Now, let's talk about these graphics. It was a big door and I wanted the graphics to go from the top to the bottom. So I used two of my graphics, printed them off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse them. They're all available in my Etsy store and I size them so they would fit that whole panel of the door. I let them sit for 24 hours, rubbed off the paper, and was left with a fantastic graphic along that whole panel. What do you think? Found this cabinet door in the wood pile, still had the original hinges and the knob. Absolutely love the chippy look of it already. Not gonna do much to it other than just scrape off the little bits and pieces of loose paint. Have this farmhouse graphic that's going to be perfect for this project and I'm going to do my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method with my matte Mod Podge. Now to finish this DIY off, I found these hooks in the scrap metal bin. Also, chippy paint is fabulous. Gonna screw them onto the bottom. And this is what I created from an old discarded cabinet door. Okay, this is an absolute piece of junk. Doesn't work, it was falling apart, but I saw the potential in it. It was in the scrap metal bin. I took off that plastic piece and the rusty colors underneath was fabulous. I'm going to scrape off all of the loose rust, clean it up a little bit, and then I'm going to seal it up with some engine enamel. As soon as I started spraying on this engine enamel, the colors even popped even more. I am so glad I rescued this from the dump. I just put some masking tape on the numbers so I wouldn't get that damaged. And I just set it up as a little place to keep a vignette, a little sign and a book, a sprig of faux flowers, and it would look beautiful displayed on an old cabinet. And just being an old scale, fantastic. 
This was one of my favorite dump finds for my outdoor patio. An old footstool and it was in really rough shape, really needed some TLC. I took off all of the steps and they needed to be cleaned really well and the metal um, needed to be painted. So I'm gonna first work on these steps, cleaned off all the junk and stuff that was in it. And when I flipped it over, it had a beautiful red color and I have that red paint. If you remember back um, that table that I finished, I have some of that red paint left over. I'm going to use that on these steps. For the metal frame, I picked out this beautiful turquoise color. Once everything was dry, I put it all together and I love the red and the turquoise color together and it looked beautiful in my garden with just that pop of color. I put some plants on the steps and an amazing find at the dump, upcycled beautifully. Always see these crates all the time, and I love upcycling them. This one was in the wood pile at the dump, and I had a vision for it, and I was just hoping I could pull it off. I love the end result, so make sure you stick through so you can see what I did with it. I took all of the hardware off. It was not secured very well and cleaned it all up. It needed a really good sanding and I have some spindles that I cut to turn into little feet for the bottom of the crate. So my vision for this crate was to turn it into an end table that looked like an old shipping container. I designed these graphics and I think it was going to be perfect for this project. Now for this project, I'm not using my Mod Podge to do the transfer, I'm using my poly acrylic. I find when you're trying to do transfers on raw wood, this type of a transfer works best. When you're doing the Mod Podge reverse on just plain wood, I find that it has a cloudy appearance. This is more of a clean, clear look when you're finished. I wanted two shelves on the inside so I had two pieces of MDF that I painted with some black chalk paint and then I sealed everything up with some of my water-based polyacrylic sealer. Let it all dry completely, put all the new hardware back on and I took an old shipping crate that I found at the dump and I've upcycled it into a beautiful end table that I think is one of a kind and I love the way it feels like an old shipping container. next up cycle is this chair that I actually found on the side of the road. Brought it home because I knew I could make it pretty again. The seat was in really rough shape so I'm taking off the chair pad and I'm going to replace it with something new. It was easy to remove, it was just staples and I just popped them off. For the year 2022, this yellow color was my go-to color. I did so many DIYs with this and I still love it. Uh, I just find that it's so warm and so inviting. I'm gonna paint this chair frame with this yellow and then distress it a little bit so it looks old and rustic. Now to tackle the chair top. I found this foam chair pad at the thrift store. The rug was at the dollar store. I cut it to size so it would fit the chair and I got some fabric glue because when I cut the rug, it started to unravel a little bit put on the fabric glue and then use my staple gun to staple it all together. This little dollar store rug made a perfect cushion for my chair and it had that yellow in the fabric which I think tied it all together. Beautiful upcycled roadside find. I had such a hard time picking all of my favorite upcycles from the dump so I hope you're still with me but this was absolutely one of my favorites. I think it was the back of a chair. It looked like it had broken off but I wanted to sand it down, bring some of that wood up from underneath, give it that distressed look. And then the inside of the chair, I'm gonna cut a piece of MDF to fit on the back and then do a beautiful quote on it. I painted the MDF with some black chalk paint and then some white chalk paint, sanded it all down. It's now ready to put on my graphics. I love this quote. It's a mindset quote. It's available in my Etsy store. Probably one of my favorite graphics. Gonna use my Mod Podge mat 
and I made sure that I measured it all out so it would fit evenly down that piece of wood and then we're going to put it onto the back of the chair. Once I had all the paper rubbed off, I sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer. This sign I ended up selling and it was one of those regrets after I did it because I know I'll never find another chair back like this again. That happens to me all the time. I wish I hang on to something and then I sell it and then I have these feelings of, oh, I shouldn't have because I loved it so much. This was one of these projects. Now this next sign, it actually caused a little bit of controversy in my comments because when I did this sign, I didn't really see it. Now I see it. I had so many people say it looks like an owl and I did this around fall time and I should have maybe turned it into a Halloween theme sign with the owl outline, but I didn't see it when I was doing it. Now I can't unsee it. Um, but I painted this with some black chalk paint, used all kinds of candle wax to give a distressed finish. And then I got out this beautiful turquoise color and painted it, put another lot of uh, candle wax on there, layered up that yellow that I love, and that's gonna finish off the frame for this picture. I cut a piece of MDF uh, to fit the back, layered up the paint again, just like I did on the front, I even used a toothbrush to kind of speckle on some of that turquoise, just giving it that vintage feel. And then I'm going to dry brush a little bit of white on. When you're doing the graphic transfer, I find that it shows the best if you have a little bit of white paint and uh, it just helps it pop more. I love this T graphic that I designed. I thought it was perfect for this frame before I actually thought that it looked like an owl. Uh, but when it was all finished, I absolutely loved it. I'm going to seal everything up with my polyacrylic sealer and then attach it to the back of the frame with a little bit of hot glue. Now that it's all finished and I love it, but I definitely see an owl now and I probably should have done a Halloween theme in an orange with a Halloween graphic in the middle. This project I turned into a reel and it was one of my most popular reels on Instagram and TikTok. Everyone loved it. I took an old dresser drawer and turned it into a birdhouse. It was made completely with bits and pieces and scrap. And when it was all done and pulled all together, it was the cutest thing ever. thrift store and it fit absolutely perfect right in that drawer painted it with some chalk paint distressed it and then I printed off my home tweet home graphic to put in the middle of that plaque we're going to let it sit for 24 hours and then take some water rub off the paper and then seal it up and it's going to fit perfect in my little project I had a bit of rusty chain with a little clamp at the bottom that would hook into the dresser drawer pull a half of a spindle that I'm going to use as a perch that I screwed on and isn't this so cute all from just scrap bits and pieces I love when I find old shovels people always throw them in the dump after the wooden handle has busted off them I don't care if I have the wooden handle on them because you can upcycle them and turn them into beautiful signs for your garden I painted this one with my white homemade chalk paint printed off this graphic and we're going to Mod Podge it onto the shovel. Now because the shovel's beveled a little bit, I cut this graphic in half so it would lay nicer and centered it where I wanted it, let it sit for 24 hours, dampened the paper, rubbed off the paper, and we're left with beautiful graphics on this old discarded shovel. Thanks for watching my video on the most incredible dump find up cycles of 2022. I hope you enjoyed seeing all these creative and resourceful ways to turn trash into treasure. And remember, one person's trash can truly be another person's treasure, so don't be afraid to dig through those dumps and thrift stores to find hidden gems. Until next time, keep up cycling and turning trash into treasure. And if you love this video, I'm sure you'll love either of these next two. Take care.